Hello everyone, uh, this is Jeff with Mississippi in the Civil War. On today's episode, we're going to talk about one of the most interesting battles of the Civil War. And of course, I'm talking about Gettysburg. And uh, we're going to be looking at the diary of Sergeant Charles E. Hutchinson, who served in Company H of the 48th Mississippi Infantry. He kept a diary uh, during the Gettysburg campaign and I thought it'd be interesting to uh, uh, give the viewpoint of an individual Mississippi soldier uh, while the, the, the campaign was actually going on. And uh, this story uh, is based off of uh, Hutchinson's diary and it was published uh, many years after his death. He uh, uh, never intended for it to be published, but uh, fortunately some of his family members after his passing uh, were able to get it published in uh, a Vicksburg newspaper. It was uh, published under the title A Confederate Soldier's History of the Army of Northern Virginia in 1863. And of course it detailed his participation in one of the most important campaigns of the Civil War, Gettysburg. And at the time the diary was published in 1896, Hutchinson had been dead uh, for several years but many of his comrades who served with him in Company H uh, were still living and uh, it was for them that uh, the newspaper really uh, published the, uh, the, the diary. The Vicksburg Post, which published uh, Hutchinson's diary, uh, said in their introduction, those of this command who are living today will no doubt take some interest in their old comrades' notes and in memory go over again the long hard marches and fight the fierce battles and stand the dreary picket they shared with him 33 years ago. Well, it's been 126 years since Hutchinson's diary was first published and the sentiments uh, expressed by the Vicksburg Post uh, all those years ago are just as valid today as they were back then. Uh, the diary doesn't really reveal any new or startling information about the Battle of Gettysburg, but it does illustrate very uh, poignantly, I think, uh, how one Mississippi sergeant of the rank and file viewed the battle and the impact that it had on him and his family. And to begin with, just to give you a little background on Hutchinson, uh, unlike most of his fellow so soldiers, uh, who were in the uh, 48th Mississippi, uh, Hutchinson was not a native Southerner. Uh, he had been born in the Prairie State. He was from Illinois. And uh, he moved to uh, Mississippi in the 1850s. And the first record I have been able to find of him is from March 5, 1856, when he married a widow, Mrs. Eleanor Calkins. Uh, by 1860, uh, Charles and Eleanor, uh, both 27 years old, uh, were living in the town of Warrenton about uh, seven or eight miles south of Vicksburg. And the couple operated a hotel uh, in Warrington uh, where they lived with their three children. With the outbreak of war in 1861, uh, Charles linked his fortune with his adopted state and joined the Vicksburg Volunteers on March 5, 1862. This was the company that was gonna become uh, Company H of the 48th Mississippi Infantry. Uh, the company left Vicksburg, and this is a good wartime shot of uh, the Hill City uh, with the courthouse in the background. I love this image. This is uh, just a great uh, shot of Vicksburg from the river. But uh, the company left Vicksburg in late April 1862 and was ordered to Virginia, where, where they were made part of the 2nd Mississippi Infantry Battalion. Uh, the 2nd Mississippi was a veteran unit that had already been in Virginia since the summer of 1861 and had already been bloodied in several battles. In fact, uh, this newspaper account uh, uh, of the 2nd Mississippi uh, calls it the Fighting Battalion. And it was a good moniker because the 2nd the Mississippi had seen quite a bit of action in the first year of the war. Uh, in the article here it says, uh, the famous 2nd Mississippi Battalion uh, conspicuous for its valor and discipline on so many bloody fields and known in the Army of the Potomac as the Fighting Battalion has recently been enlarged and will henceforth be recognized as the 48th Mississippi Regiment as it will doubtless be of interest to many of our readers to know who are the officers of the newly organized regiment a friend has kindly furnished us with the following report and it lists all of the uh, field and company officers of the regiment but uh, just to give you an idea 
uh, when the uh, Second Mississippi Battalion became the 48th Mississippi Infantry, um, they added in uh, additional companies. The battalion usually had about uh, seven companies. Uh, they added an additional uh, three, uh, or no, they brought, added an additional, yeah, three to bring it up to uh, 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 ten companies in the regiment to make it a, a full-sized uh, re uh, regulation regiment. The Second Mississippi Infantry Battalion uh, had belonged to the Department of Northern Virginia, uh, commanded by General Joseph E. Johnston. Under his command, uh, Sergeant Hutchinson uh, first saw combat with the Second Mississippi at the Battle of Seven Pines, Virginia, uh, May 31st to June 1st, 1862. Uh, General Johnston was wounded in this engagement, and command of the Army passed to a new leader, uh, Robert E. Lee. Uh, soon after taking over, uh, Lee renamed his new command the Army of Northern Virginia, a name that would grow to almost legendary status as they won victory after victory over the larger and much better equipped uh, Army of the Potomac. And while serving with the unit, Hutchinson participated in some of the most famous battles of uh, the war in the Eastern Theater. Uh, the Second Mississippi fought in the Seven Days Battles around Richmond, they fought at Second Manassas, they fought at Sharpsburg, they fought at Fredericksburg, uh, they fought at Chancellorsville. Uh, these are just a few of the battles that the, uh, the uh, unit had uh, participated in. Uh, Hutchinson survived all of these bloody engagements and by the time of the Gettysburg Campaign, he had promote, been promoted from uh, fifth sergeant to third sergeant. So he must have shown some uh, some uh, level of uh, initiative and uh, and ability uh, to be uh, promoted uh, as he was. And when Hutchinson began his diary uh, on June 15, 1863, the Army of Northern Virginia was already in motion. They were moving toward Pennsylvania in their second invasion of the North. Uh, General Lee had planned to defeat the Army of the Potomac on northern soil and then tr hopefully try and force a negotiated end to the war. Uh, now such grand strategy I think meant very little to Hutchinson uh, who had more pressing concerns, uh, namely uh, surviving the next battle and also worrying about the safety of his wife and children who were at the same time he was uh, uh, involved in one major campaign they were involved in another because uh, they were involved in the Vicksburg campaign, which was going on at the same time. And so Hutchinson had a lot to worry about, not just for himself, but for his family as well. But uh, Hutchinson's diary uh, begins on June 15, 1863. And this is what he wrote on that day. Uh, camped one mile from Chancellorsville, marched 15 miles, most of the day very hot, Forty of our brigade fainted, one died, gave out myself. And that was a very common uh, feature of, of these long, tiring marches, that the heat could really take a toll on a unit's strength. And it was not uncommon for lots of men to fall out uh, just from heat prostration. But to give you an idea, this is where he was writing from, from Chancellorsville, right here. And then they were going to be heading north to Front Royal then on to Charlestown, and then on to Hagerstown. And in the picture here is Brigadier General Carnot Posey. Uh, he was the uh, uh, commander of the brigade to which uh, the 48th Mississippi belonged. And in addition to the 48th Mississippi, his brigade, which was an all-Mississippi brigade, uh, consisted of the 12th Mississippi Infantry, the 16th Mississippi Infantry, and the 19th Mississippi Infantry. Uh, Posey's brigade was part of Anderson's division of the 3rd Army Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. And June 16th, uh, Hutchinson recorded, marched 12 miles and camped to cook. Feel very unwell. Have heard nothing from home. Dread the worst. And uh, Hutchinson had good reason to be worried for his family. Uh, when the New Union Navy had uh, first approached Vicksburg in May of 1863, 
His wife Eleanor took the children and uh, fled uh, to the Methodist Church at uh, Redbone, about 10 miles south of Vicksburg. Uh, eventually, uh, she was going to leave uh, the church here and head on into the city, and uh, she and the, the children were going to be in Vicksburg when the city was eventually besieged, and uh, they were to remain there throughout the, uh, the remainder of the Siege of Vicksburg. So Hutchinson was not... Uh, not wrong to be worried for the the safety of his family because they were uh, very much in the line of fire uh, during the, the the Vicksburg campaign, and I can't imagine what that would be like having to try and uh, you're going through this major campaign yourself, and all the while you've got to worry about your family back home, who's actually probably in just as much danger as you are. It had to be a, a terrible time for uh, Hutchinson and all of the men. Uh, in his his regiment who had similar concerns for their families. On June 17th, uh, Hutchinson recorded, very hot, a great many men falling out, camped yesterday two miles from Culpeper, rested a great many times, crossed Hazel River at sundown and camped, took a good bath in the river. And uh, I can imagine after a long, tiring, dusty march, Having a good uh, a good bath in a in a, a cool river would uh, would be very refreshing. On June eighteenth, Hutchinson stated, started early, very hot and sultry, a great many men falling out. Stopped at eleven o'clock to rest. Cloudy, had a hard rain. Marched at two o'clock and camped one and a half miles from Flint Hill. June nineteenth, stopped early. Very good marching. Have heard splendid news from General Ewell. Stopped for a while one mile, or stopped for a while one mile from uh, Fort Royal. And he's, he's, he wrote Fort Royal, he probably meant Font Royal, or Front Royal, excuse me. Uh, crossed Southern Shenandoah that evening during the rain and camped for the night, raining very hard. Passed a very unpleasant night. And uh, when uh, he mentioned in his diary that uh, he had heard splendid news from General Ewell, he was probably referring to General Richard S. Ewell, uh, who was commander of the Second Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. On June 14, 1863, uh, he had defeated uh, Union General Robert Milroy at the Battle of Winchester in the Shenandoah Valley. And that's probably the victory that he is referring to. And Front Royal is right here, right in the Shenandoah, middle of the Shenandoah Valley. On June 20th, Hutchinson recorded, moved early, two miles and stopped to cook. Rained very hard this evening. Marched about 10 miles and camped at a very nice place. June 21st, marched about eight miles today and are now camped near Berryville. For the last three days, have been hearing, uh, have been uh, marching through the finest country I ever saw. Heard bully news from Mississippi, if it is true. Cannot hear from home. Am in hopes uh, that uh, letters may soon come through. And uh, I don't know what bully news he he was talking about. He may have heard something uh, of the repulse of uh, Grant's attacks on either the May 19th or the 22nd at Vicksburg. That could be what he's what he's referring to, but I'm not entirely certain. Uh, he went on to state, uh, June 22nd, have written home today. Hope the letter will get there. Started very late. Marched nine miles and camped. The country is the finest I have ever seen. The scenery is beautiful. Passed several small towns and camped at sundown in a nice grove. On June 23rd, he, he recorded, started early today, cool and pleasant. Passed through Charlestown, were greeted with cheers, the waving of flags and handkerchiefs. There are a great many ladies, all true Southerners. Hurrah for Charlestown. If I get sick, I want to go back there. Marched about 10 miles and camped to cook. Left Harper's Ferry on the right, free of Yankees. On June 24th, he stated, started early and crossed the Potomac at 10 o'clock. Stopped to rest in sight of Sharpsburg. We are now, fa now fairly started into Maryland. Hope we will be more fortunate than before. Passed through Sharpsburg, houses were closed, no Southern feeling there. At Neatersville Ditch, 
through which we passed, a son of General Wright was taken prisoner just ahead of our troops today. We are camped near Boonesboro. And uh, when Hutchinson uh, mentioned uh, uh, that uh, he would hope they would be more fortunate than the before, he is almost certainly referring to his experiences uh, with the regiment at the, uh, the Battle of Sharpsburg. Uh, the, re the second Mississippi Battalion, it was, as it was known then, had fought at Sharpsburg uh, September 17, 1862, and uh, they had suffered five men killed and 55 wounded. So uh, I'm sure that uh, passing through the town again uh, had some very uh, brought up some very uh, difficult memories for him. But on uh, June 25th, he recorded, started very early, passed through Boonesboro, all Union. We captured several spies in towns in town yesterday. We are marching through a fine country and are within 10 miles of Pennsylvania. Passed through Franktown, a good many Southerners in it. We camped in sight of Hagerstown. And this is Hagerstown. Uh, June 26th, passed through Hagerstown. All Union. Did not see but one Southerner, but she gave us a wave. Middletown, through which we passed, is on the Pennsylvania line. Two or three small specimens of Confederate flags were exhibited. A very pretty town, all rabid Union. Some very pretty girls, but they looked very black at us. Marched 12 miles and camped at 12 o'clock. Raining very hard all day. Miserable souls since we left the pike in Maryland. There has been some pressing. It looks hard, but the army must live. I hope there will be no ladies insulted. Expect a fight in a day or two. And when Hutchinson talks about pressing, he's talking about the impressment of food and other uh, supplies from civilians by the Confederate Army. And I can imagine Hutchinson was very sensitive on this topic because uh, he had to think, you know, my family's back in, in Vicksburg. What are the, the Union soldiers doing to them? So uh, I'm sure he uh, looked very strongly uh, uh, in a negative way on uh, on the mistreatment of civilians in any form, just because uh, it, it was a, a a subject that really struck home to him, and that really comes forth in in his diary entries. On June twenty seventh, he wrote wrote home, left camp about eight o'clock, marched in rear of the division, passed through Marion, a small village, saw General Longstreet uh, today for the first time on the march. He rode into Chambersburg at the head of our brigade. The burg is a very nice place of about 10,000 inhabitants, all Yankees and full of young men. Some of our boys haven't acted right or in hopes it will be stopped. Strict orders have been issued in regard to it. We are camped near the mountains. And again, uh, Hutchinson's just impressing the fact that uh, he is not uh, uh, not in favor of any kind of ill treatment of civilians. Again, I mean, he had a family at home that was going through the exact same thing, and he could only hope the Federals were, were, were treating his family decently. So, yes, he, he was very sensitive about this topic. And uh, James Longstreet that he mentioned in, uh, in his diary was the commander of the 1st Corps of the Army in Northern Virginia. He was not in uh, Hutchinson's uh, uh, line of command, but he was probably passing through town uh, uh, scouting out the, the way for his corps. On June 28th, Hutchinson recorded, remained in camp all day. We had preaching in camp. Two young ladies were present. Foraging party sent out this morning and returned with chicken, eggs, honey, butter, and onions for which they paid in Confederate money, which I'm sure the locals weren't all that thrilled to take uh, Confederate money, but uh, uh, they would have been given no choice. Uh, on June 29th, he wrote, have orders to be ready to move at 7.30. Orders countermanded. Good news from the brave old state of Mississippi. Grant has been repulsed again with great loss. Reported at 10,000. Hurrah for Mississippi. And again, he's probably talking about the, either the May 19th or May 22nd assaults. Uh, the number of casualties, of course, is greatly inflated from what it uh, truly was. But uh, um, I'm sure any kind of positive news from Vicksburg, Hutchinson had to look on uh, uh, favorably. Uh, he went on to say, uh, June 30th, still in camp, have had some rain today, have heard that we are the reserve division. 
Some of our battalion came in today that had been left behind sick. They report Yankees at, ha at Hagerstown. And now we come to the first day of the battle. On July 1st, he, he recorded, left camp near Chambersburg early, passed through Fayetteville and were soon climbing the mountains, and went at the top, heard cannons ahead of us, marched on and found a fight progressing near the town of Gettysburg, a good many coming out wounded and a large lot of prisoners. Hear that Hooker has been superseded by Meade and that we have killed General Reynolds. We have driven them some distance today and have heard that we took 6,000 prisoners. And uh, uh, Hutchinson's uh, uh, information was correct. Uh, Major General Joseph Hooker had been relieved of command of the Army of the Potomac three days earlier, uh, just before the Battle of Gettysburg, and had been replaced with Major General George G. Meade. Uh, Major General John F. Reynolds that he mentions also uh, had, was the, the commander of the 1st Corps of the Army of the Potomac and he was killed uh, July 1st at Gettysburg. On July 2nd, uh, Hutchinson recorded, we have moved to the front to support a battery, sent out skirmishers and threw up temporary rifle pits for our protection. In the evening, our battalion was sent forward to support skirmishers, and we were driving the foe, advanced to within 300 yards of a battery, and could have taken it if we had been supported, I think. Stayed out until dark and came back to the pits. Our adjutant was killed, lost to our company, wounded, uh, Kane shot in the hand, McRaven in, shot in the ankle, Gibson in the head, and Wiley slightly in the hand. It seems impossible for men to advance in such a storm of shot and no more be killed. The shelling was terrific. And uh, this photograph you see is a modern photograph of the, the Gettysburg battlefield showing the area held by Posey's brigade. And you're looking north across the eastern base of Seminary Ridge from a point uh, near the Virginia Mo uh, Memorial on the, on the battlefield park. And uh, Posey's brigade occupied a line at the base of Seminary Ridge. Uh, the 12th Mississippi stood just beyond the fence in the distance. Beyond them were the 48th, 19th, and the 16th Mississippi regiments. And at the time of the battle, uh, there were not so many trees here as there are today. It was a lot more open. And uh, uh, Posey's brigade, uh, during the fighting on uh, the 2nd, had been supporting Major uh, William J. Pegram's battalion of artillery, which was just to the front of their position. Uh, the adjutant that H Hutchinson mentions being killed was Martin R. Campbell, who had been appointed to the position on May 16, 1863. Uh, Private Charles M. Kane, that he also mentions, was wounded in action on July 2nd, and he was permanently disabled and detailed to Provost Marshal duty in Georgia. Uh, Private D.J. McRaven uh, was wounded in the ankle. Uh, he was permanently disabled and never able to return to the regiment. Uh, David D. Gibson uh, was wounded on July 2nd. After a short hospital stay, he was able to return to the regiment and served all the way through to Appomattox. And then uh, Private uh, John C. Wiley was wounded on July 2nd. And by the end of September, he had recovered and was back with the regiment. And this is a map of the Gettysburg battlefield, just a portion of it, but you can see I've highlighted here the location of Posey's brigade. And on July 3rd, Hutchinson recorded, we were awakened this morning by the picket firing and soon after the cannon opened up and then we had a lively time of it. About 12 lines of battle were formed and advanced about two o'clock but the enemy was too strongly posted. Before our lines advanced, our cannon opened and were replied to by the enemy. And such a rattling of shell and I never heard before. It was one continued roar for about two hours. I thought I had been under shell at Manassas, Sharpsburg, and Fredericksburg, but I never saw shelling until today. A great many horses of our battalion were killed. Do not know our loss in front. Expect it was heavy. Now, uh, Posey's brigade was not uh, actually involved in Pickett's charge. Uh, they were uh, they were uh, witnesses to it, but they were not directly involved, other than being subjected to a lot of the the artillery bombardment. And 
The 48th Mississippi, uh, all in all, was pretty lucky during the Gettysburg uh, campaign. They only had six men killed and 24 wounded, which is uh, really light casualties for as, as fierce a battle as, as Gettysburg was. And on July 4th, uh, Hutchinson began uh, describing the Confederate retreat from Gettysburg as Robert E. Lee had decided to disengage and return home after three days of uh, bloody but uh, uh, inconclusive fighting. And he, uh, he wrote on July 4th, heavy skirmishing today all along the lines. We were moved further to the right and again threw up temporary rifle pits with bayonets and tin plates. Heavy rain most of the day. We will fall back tonight and it will fall to our battalion to go on picket tonight. July 5th, we relieved the 16th Mississippi pickets last evening and the artillery were withdrawn and in an hour all the troops in our front were gone. I did not like to be left but the night passed very quickly with occasional picket firing, rained hard all night. At the break of day, the order was given to fall back and we went at a double quick at the, uh, to the rear and formed. Here had the hardest march I remember. Passing through Fairfield, we soon struck the mountains eight miles from Barnett's Ford. Raining all the time and the roads knee deep in mud. After we got to the mountains, the narrow road was blocked with wagons and such a march I have never seen. Our brigade was ahead of us and we were trying to get up to it. We passed over and through the mountains and camped at night one mile from the gap near a little town, Waterloo. Our wagons were not up and we will have to forage some. We have marched between 20 and 22 miles. The enemy have made some captures from us in the mountains. So it gives you an idea of just kind of the chaotic and, and very difficult nature of this uh, retreat to, back toward Virginia. On July 12th, Hutchinson wrote, open still and cloudy. 16th Mississippi Infantry went foraging and made a big haul. I am sorry to see it. It will not make friends for us. I think it entirely wrong. My family have been robbed, but I cannot bring myself to do the same. Picket firing all along the lines in front. Have heard today of the fall of Vicksburg. It is hard to believe it and I trust it may not be true. If it is true, it is a sad blow to the South. It will surely prolong the war. In the meantime, what will become of our wives and little children? It makes me sick at heart to think of the suffering they will have to endure. I fear my little ones will be hungry many times before the war ends. God hasten the end. If Vicksburg has fallen, I fear there must be some foul play. General Pemberton has done his duty nobly. The blame must attach to someone else. Heavy firing on our left, we had a nice rain today. And um, you can just you can feel the 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 worry in his in his uh, tone uh, as he's writing about his family. I mean he's he really has no idea what's happened to them. He doesn't know uh, if if they've been hurt, if they may have been killed, if they've been starved in Vicksburg. He just li literally does not know, and that had to be just terrible. Just waiting for a letter from home, but not knowing if you're ever going to get one because you don't know what's happened to your family. And Hutchinson uh, re recorded a great many more entries to his diary. I'm not going to continue on through all of it uh, as uh, it goes in, uh, goes on for uh, several more months. But uh, his uh, the article for the Vicksburg Evening Post included a copies of some letters written by him um, just after the campaign ended that do talk about Gettysburg. And uh, I think I will I'll quote from a couple of these letters. On August 22nd, 1863, he wrote from Orange Courthouse, Virginia, to his wife Eleanor, and he said, uh, I am taking chances to get a letter to you. Another of my regiment is going as near as Cayuga, and it is probable you may get this one. I send by him. I have written often by mail and have sent two letters by flag of truce, the first directed to J.S. Acuff, the other to T.H. Jett at Vicksburg, uh, both this month, and will continue to write to you. If you can get your answer to Dave Herring at Cayuga, I will get it. I am almost crazy to hear from you and our children, God bless them. I wrote also by James Crump of my company. I am in good health and have been through all the marches and have been in all the fights without a scratch. Charlie Kane, poor fellow, lost his arm at Gettysburg, but is getting well and has gone to Alabama to see his brother. 
Dave Gibson and Wiley slightly wounded and now with the company. McRaven was wounded in the ankle. It was a terrible fight. All quiet here now, but there will be an awful fight within the next two months, which will end the war, I think. I have not heard from you since the Battle of Chancellorsville, which was in May of 63, and it's now, you know, late August. I then received two letters. And then Hutchinson wrote a second letter on uh, September 22nd, 1863, uh, from Rapidan Station, and he said, uh, we were moved 10 days ago from our camp at Orange Courthouse down on the Rapidan River to check the enemy who were driving Stuart and have been here ever since, skirmishing almost every day and throwing up works. I don't think we will have a fight here. I've just heard that Bragg has whipped Rosecrans. That is good news. He's talking about the Battle of Chickamauga, which was in September of 63. I suppose you've heard the particulars of the Gettysburg fight. It was a terrible affair. You have had a hard time, I know, and you are drawing rations from the enemy. I feel for you deeply. If I could get to you, I would try for a furlough. I hear a great many are taking the oath. Sink or swim with the cause, I am in it. It is very hard to be away from you and the children, but it must be born. And uh, Sergeant Hutchinson was uh, true to his word. Uh, he served the Confederacy faithfully, and uh, he was promoted to first sergeant in the Vicksburg Volunteers. In early 1865, uh, he, he uh, got an illness and uh, was give, granted a medical furlough uh, to return to Mississippi to recuperate. On February 8, 1865, Hutchinson was admitted to the Way Hospital in Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, by the time he had recovered from this illness, uh, the war was almost over. Uh, with the collapse of the Confederacy imminent, he was not able to w make his way back to uh, uh, Virginia. So he was uh, assigned to a detachment of men uh, who were also cut off from their units. Uh, and they were attached to Brigadier General uh, Matthew Ector's brigade for the defense of Mobile, Alabama. And Sergeant Hutchinson was with uh, this command when the uh, department commander, uh, Lieutenant General Richard Taylor, uh, surrendered all of the forces under his command. And uh, with the war over, Hutchinson uh, went home to his beloved Eleanor and his children. Uh, he died on October 29, 1887, of cancer at the age of 55. He was initially buried in an unmarked grave at the Redbone Church Cemetery in southern Warren County, but I'm happy to say that on October 14, 1999, uh, myself and uh, Gordon Cotton, uh, at the time uh, I was working for Gordon at the Old Courthouse Museum, we had ordered a uh, headstone for uh, uh, Sergeant Hutchinson, and uh, we uh, placed that uh, in the uh, in the cemetery as a memorial marker. We weren't sure where his exact grave was, so we just put it up in a, a good location at the cemetery as a memorial to uh, First Sergeant Charles E. Hutchinson, who had, had served his adopted uh, state of Mississippi very well during the war. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, this episode. Uh, I really like these first person accounts because I think they really give you a, a real uh, uh, insight into what the war uh, was about and and the motivations of the of the men that fought uh, uh, for Mississippi from the from and fought for the Confederacy. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to uh, my my channel. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please subscribe because it really gives me a good idea of, uh, of just how, uh, how, how much uh, uh, interest there is in, in continuing to do these kinds of, of uh, episodes. Uh, I just passed uh, 300 subscribers, which I was very just thrilled to, to see that many people are interested in, uh, in what I'm doing. And I'm actually planning on doing something special in the very near future. Um, I've got copies of my latest article that came out in uh, the Artilleryman magazine, and I thought I might give uh, a copy, a signed copy away uh, to one of our, the subscribers to the channel. But uh, stay tuned, I'll be giving you some more information about that uh, very soon. And I'll be back with you very shortly with a new, a new episode. And uh, thank you very much.